In this small village in the south of India, children make matchboxes as a home industry. Four-year-old Rashida helps her sister Puchamal. She has the dexterity her sister lacks. The children are paid per box. For 1,000 glued boxes, they make nine rupees, about 25 US cents. I don't miss school, says this girl. In 40 villages in Sivakasi, in the state of Tamil Nadu, matches and matchboxes are made like this. In every village, around one to 300 families are working. Most of the work is done by women and girls. When the child would be entering into the labour force, it entered into the labour force at the age of five and six. And also they work more than 12 hours a day. So they don't have any time of their own as such. And they work, work and work. They exhaust the whole charm of life in the labour. That's why we say that child labour is stealing away the childhood. Palpati has worked since she was little. Every morning she leaves the house with her mother. The 11-year-old makes matchboxes. Her mother works in the fields. <laughs> Child labour is illegal in India, but no one cares about it. Neither employees, nor the parents who need every cent. The children sit for hours at a time in the dark and stick the boxes together. Tiny children squat nearby. Frequently generations work together under the same roof, from grandmother to grandchild. Pasupati also often helps in the fields in the evening. Her mother picks cotton. Her father grows sunflowers, cotton and maize. But the money he earns from this isn't enough to feed his nine children. Every month he has to pay off his debts. Women in India are used to work, in the factories or in the fields. For some years now, the land has been able to produce enough to cover their food needs, but there's no surplus, at least not in Tamil Nadu. Rice is generally threshed by hand. Only a few villages can afford a harvesting machine. Seventy-five percent of children in the match factories have parents that belong to the lowest caste. They carry out the lowest forms of work, and the pay corresponds to that. In these Indian families, daughters have no opportunity. The hereditary is maintained through the sons they believe. That's why even we have a proverb selling, uh, telling that for the property we need son. Just only to have a fascination we need daughters. So when they have more daughters, they don't think it is their children. Hmm? What they think is they uh, would even go to the extent of killing the babies. That is what we call it as female infanticide. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning To help these children, the government finances schools. The state coffers have been empty for the last two years. Before, 100 children used to come here to learn. Now, there are only seven. Every family, including the parents from Guru Lakshmi, get 100 rupees a month, about three US dollars. This is compensation for the lost earnings of their daughter or son, but that's only a third of what a child could earn in a month. The mother is hoping that the government will pay more money, 
Otherwise, she'll have to send her seven-year-old back to the factory. My daughter only wants to go to school, says the mother. It's rare in a village that children, particularly girls, have as much free time as in Guru Lakshmi. This factory manufactures matches. 90 workers are employed here. No one will say how many of them are children. The matches are stuck on a wooden board. After being dipped in a toxic liquid, they are dried overnight. The children have been working here for years. They breathe in the corrosive sulphur fumes. There's no air conditioning. Most people here are illiterate. They have to trust others to count for them. At the end of the day, they show how many boxes and matches they've made. Lawyer Ganyupta Shanta has founded a women's organization. It's thanks to her that a law has been passed which states that factory owners who are caught employing children are now liable to be fined 530 US dollars. Now, and the factory owners don't dare to employ the children openly, but even now they do it, but in a very secret way. Like if you want to go and film them there, no, you won't find anybody, any kids inside the factory, because they would ask the children to go away from the place. But it had given a kind, kind of a fear to the factory owners because they needed to pay a big compensation for employing the children in their factories. According to one human rights organization, 150,000 children work in the fireworks industry. Sivakasi is the manufacturing center of rockets, crackers, jumping jacks and sparklers. 200 factories are situated here. It's a million dollar business. These fireworks are exported all around the world. Because explosive substances are used, there are occasional accidents. Then, the eyes of the world fall on the production conditions of the workers. But nobody cares about their fate. They're known as the silver men. At work, they wear gloves and masks. When sparklers are being manufactured, Part of the process is to dip the metal sticks into a poisonous heavy metal salt. The barium nitrate and aluminium dust leaves the skin shining. The chemicals can enter the lungs and eat away the body. The employers play with their employees' health as if it were a game, paying them a pittance but there's no other work in Sivakasi, and for illiterates, there's nothing. It's difficult to film in the fireworks factory, particularly when there is child labor or health hazards. Here we found one child. She works with her mother. She makes jumping jacks. Working without protection for the skin can lead to circulatory problems and lung damage. The workers can't complain or fall sick. Men earn a couple of hundred rupees a month, just enough to feed their families. Eleven-year-old Venkateswari sticks matches in a ring. She makes 25 of these a day. The chemicals get in her eyes. Her lungs hurt, says her mother. And her hands are particularly affected. Children that work here lose their youth and damage their health for only a few cents. But who thinks of them when we see a rocket rush towards the sky? and burst into stars.